So I've heard that being a sales manager is the hardest job in the world. And um, they say that, you know, to express some empathy here for sales managers, that the worst thing in the world that you guys have to deal with is that you're, you're basically babysitters for grown people. So, um, and you, you, you know, you, it's a balancing act. Uh, now that I'm older and I'm no longer the young pain in the behind new sales rep that I was, and I was, I was terrible. The gentleman, Rich Tereskin, that gave me this formula, my first uh, sales manager, uh, and I, I loved him dearly. We all did. We were horrible. And he took incredible flack for us, uh, goofing off and trying to find ways around the system because, honestly, we didn't really care about the job. We were so arrogant. We thought we were college graduates and we thought we deserved everything and the money that he had set up to help us make. We just took it and went and chased girls all throughout Manhattan and went to industry parties. That's what that's what I was trying to do i was obsessed with the with the i was i was in the golden age of hip-hop music so how are you as a sales manager going to get your young sales reps because you know you got a choice you want to you can either hire an older person with a book of business who's going to be a pain in the behind and and is going to tell you that no don't tell me what to do i know how to do it i've been doing it for 30 years and that's a whole other pain in the behind. Or you can hire some young people who are going to be not that expensive as far as a base salary is concerned and you can mold them. But the risk there is that you're going to have to babysit them and, the, and, the, and there's going to be a high turnover rate because they're going to quit or they're going to have to fire them or they're going to... Is, I've seen crazy things like doing drugs in the bathroom and come out you know, inebriated and have to go home and it's just a, it's just a scene in the middle of the office, right? So how are you going to get them to willingly turn themselves from children into this, an assassin, a calculating, methodical sales professional. Because they can do it. We all knew we could do it. We just didn't want to commit to it. We didn't want to have to be that disciplined and that switched on. And we didn't want to have to socialize with it. We, you know, nobody wants to do that at that young of age. How are you going to get them to even realize that they need to reinvent themselves? I had managers who begged me, like Mike Cody, who protected me when I was a, a sales engineer for working for him, and uh, and and other this other guy Steve who came and took me out, and he was just an incredible salesperson. I watched him go from nothing to becoming a sales manager in the space of two months. He would take me out and just close deals instantly, just order people around and order CEOs around. And it was a, he was an amazing guy, and he went from being just a, a, a rookie to in. Um, in the space of two months, having his own office. I mean, he was incredible. And and it, it was a slow process for me. While I was watching all this happen, I was being protected by these managers. I was still hanging out in the Hamptons and going to these industry parties and trying to chase models around Manhattan. And slowly, after going out in the Hamptons and going to parties and meeting people that were just as confident as the entertainment industry, people in the entertainment industry, but but they were corporate guys, I started to realize that these people were just like me. They had just made a made a conscious decision to reinvent themselves. And I met this one guy, Andre, who embarrassed me. I mean, I didn't know what he did. He would invite me to the Four Seasons Hotel during the day. And, uh, and and have drinks with me. And then he would come up with ideas for way I could start ways I could start my own business. And he, But he would never tell me what he did. And then one day I, I told him what company I was. He never even knew what company I was working for. And and I, and I my managers would say, Bintel, get your elevator pitch down so that when you meet somebody, you can tell them and you can tell, the, tell them what the company stock price is and run down the company like you're the CEO. I didn't listen. I didn't put that much effort in because I was just trying to do the bare minimum and get my paycheck so I could go hang out in the Hamptons and do what I thought was important to me. And I remember meeting Andre and talking to him about my company. And instantly, Andre knew the stock price of the company. He knew everything about the company. He could have done the elevator pitch for the managers. He could have walked in and been a manager in that company in the sales department instantly. And I realized that Andre not only knew the ins and outs of my company, he knew every company, tech company on the NASDAQ. Andre was a trader. And I met him at a party in the Hamptons, Ted Fields, Jay-Z's party, and he his sister owned the Hard Rock Hotel. So I started meeting all these <clears throat> incredibly dynamic and amazing people, and it became clear to me that 
I had to figure something out. I had to reinvent myself. And the sales managers would always beat in my head that people are not just buying our product. They're buying you. They're buying you, Bintel. If they don't buy you, they're never going to buy our product. And slowly, bit by bit, I started to get it until I realized that I had to reinvent myself. And, uh, and this is something that I believe young salespeople need to be told immediately. As soon as they walk through the door, they need to realize that they have to not just learn the product, but they have to learn they, they have to learn how the product was engineered, and they have to know the product almost as good as the engineers who created the product, but they have to re-engineer themselves to complement the product. And that is something, a story that you know that we that I if you if I was so fortunate to work with your company, I believe it's important that somebody come in and, and tell them that and not the sales manager, because my sales managers harped on me and tried to get me to do this. Mike Cody, he begged me. Rich Tereskin, they begged me to do it, but I, I, I couldn't hear them. I had to go out and see it in action in, in the real world. And um and, and this is something that, you know, the value of logic and re-engineering yourself, which is part of our program that I'm going to discuss next, how we're going to do that, is, uh, is, a, is a vital part of you as a sales manager not having to babysit your sales team, not having to groom them and take the time to do that, to get them to do that instantly when they walk through the door. They have to methodically be told that they are allowed to reinvent themselves. Now this gibberish, this gibberish that you're looking at on the screen is called computer code. It's called uh, it's syntax or computer programming. It's the basis of how people like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates have made your cell phones work. Um, it is the language of innovation, I like to call it. And that's why I think there's so many billionaires in the tech industry that come out of the computer science industry because everything about the language that they learn is geared towards innovation, all right? It's geared towards making things. It, it's literally like a, a language of, of innovation. I think I just said that. <laughs> and the most popular logic, and they call it logic, isn't it? For, for, let me just get that out. And um, if, you're, if you're a sales manager watching this video, like, what the hell does this have to do with my salespeople and them being better salespeople? Well, what I'm, my, my, my proposal is that you can use this innovation logic statement. The most popular one is the if-then logic statement. They have if-then-else, else-if. They have a whole bunch of variations on them. Incidentally... Whenever I talk to psychology, excuse me, whenever I talk to people in education, because I've been selling this as a curriculum into, this, into the public school system for the last 15 years, and whenever I talk to a, a, you know, an administrator that has a doctorate degree, they always tell me that they studied the if-then logic statement in their psychology class. In their psychology class. So if this logic statement, this whole notion of if-then has has relevance in tech to innovate and innov and and create new products and also parallels in psychology that sort of makes my point that you can use this logic statement or logic like this to reinvent your sales team and um i'm going to show you our logic statement next and and uh, you know explain to you uh, try to briefly explain how you can use this to you know to teach your salespeople to reinvent themselves quicker to get them to the top of the sales food chain as quickly as possible based on their behavior and i just want to say that you know when i went out to the hamptons and when i started hanging out with successful people that were salespeople and now they reinvented themselves as some ceo they spin off some new product and then they call themselves a ceo and they're out in the hamptons wearing incredible gucci and prada and they were just in they were just insane aggressive little guys they all knew this this was all common knowledge to them they had worked in sales for a few years and they made their bones and then now they had reinvented some product in addition to themselves and they were selling this new product and themselves in a package deal and they were making quite a living off of it and um, once I saw them doing this in the Hamptons and traveling and chasing the entertainment industry parties all over from LA to Vegas and meeting guys like Andre and, and you know and, and, and 
Puffy's all white party, um, I realized that this is something that can be done not just for myself. Obviously, I had to do it for myself. I, I methodically turned. I said to I was gonna I was gonna wear Ralph Lauren clothes and I was gonna go to the gym so I could look like an athlete, but then I could still pass for a corporate guy during the day. I I literally made that promise to myself. Um, so this is something that that can be done. It is done. And I think it would really help your sales. T- I, I don't think I know because it was the difference between me failing and me being wildly successful when I actually made a point of doing it um, in a very in a very purposeful way. Now, now, this is the logic statement. This is our logic statement. Well, this is my logic statement. I, I actually invented this logic statement. Uh, when I die, my daughter, my ungrateful daughter will inherit it. <laughs> And uh, this is what engineers use to create new ideas for new products. And my assertion is that every product that has ever been created on Earth was you. This logic statement is the is the thought process that goes on in the human being's head. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if we can use this to invent products and reverse engineer products, meaning figure out what the inventor of a product was thinking when they came up with an idea for like the light bulb or Netflix or whatever, what were they thinking? How did they come to this new idea? It's very easy to use it to reinvent someone's behavior and and their persona and their and their and their everything about themselves. They can literally do this. And again, in that movie, there's a movie called Fight Club where Brad Pitt talks about how all successful people do it. I did it when I was a kid. I've done it multiple times. I couldn't fight those big bullies in my neighborhood growing up. I had to invent this guy. I invented this e- alter ego. Everybody does it. Beyonce does it. Uh, she calls herself Sasha Fierce. Um, Rihanna reinvented herself from this good girl singing, you know, if you want to love me or whatever. So, and then she bat- and then she turned herself into a bad girl. Bingo, bango, bongo. She was incredibly successful. Everyone does this. So it's no shame in, in allowing your new sales team that has no idea what they're getting themselves involved in to methodically and very purposefully use a logic statement to reinvent themselves into a super salesperson. And this is something that, you know, either you can do as a sales manager or you can you know have me come in and I can walk them through it in some sort of a sales training capacity for a few days. Um, and and this is this is how we do it. I would if you read the book and, uh, you know, reading the book will give you a decent understanding of it. But us walking th- and I walk through this when I teach this in schools. This is a big hit with the kids. I can get kids to start inventing products in about a day, in, a, in an hour, less than that. Once they see this, they see it, they're gone off, they're off to the races. I'm sure your sales staff will do the same thing. So this is the challenge. We all know that 20% of your sales force is going to do 80% of the work. How are you going to flip that around? How are you going to get these kids that want this? They want to hang out in the Hamptons. They want to be puffy and... And they want to be Leonardo DiCaprio. How are you going to get them to willfully turn themselves into these kind of people? Because they probably think that these people are nerds. What they don't know is that the people that are at those parties are salespeople. What they don't know is that the people that they are looking at are people, are actors and actresses who have willfully reinvented themselves into different roles and they do it all the time they don't they don't they don't get that it's it's you get that but they don't how are you going to get them to willfully do this in the shortest amount of time because as i'm not to lecture excuse me a salesperson's most valuable asset is not their product it's their time and your time is valuable and you don't want to babysit and you don't want these you don't want to fire these kids and churn them and and waste a ton of the company's money the best, I think, in my experience from my life being 53 years old now was when I, I saw it for myself. It took me years, 15 years approximately, to figure this out. You don't have 15 years to do that with these kids. We think we can help. I know we can help. Please give us a call. 
On behalf of everyone at Bandit Publishing, our entire staff, we want to thank you for watching this presentation. If you have any questions, that's my number. Towards the bottom, please give me a call. My name is Bintel Powell. I'm the CEO and founder of Bandit Publishing, and we would love to talk to you. Take care.